Hey guys, I've been cleaning up the cabinet for this Sentinel set, and while doing so, I discovered on the back some dates. The 351 up here, and there's a couple more dates on the bottom. Um, somebody penciled in here, May 1951. So I was asked when this set was from, and I wasn't sure. Well, now I can think I can pretty definitively say that this set was from uh, the spring of 1951. This cabinet is made out of what they call blonde Corina wood, uh, also known as limba, which is a nice light wood uh, that comes from Africa, which gives it this really nice 50s blonde finish look. The speaker cloth was pretty well stained and had uh, uh, a stain from the grill behind here. It's in a, a, a 60s piece symbol, kind of V. <laughs> Uh, but I used some stain remover and then some bleach and I think this came out really well Now I was about to slide the chassis back in and and uh, Put this project on the side for a while and I remembered something I actually did pick up another 16 inch set last summer And it's buried under all this junk and I completely forgot about it Down here. It's a monkey wards 16 inch set from I think 50 or 51 when I got this set, I did power it up briefly, and I did get um, a picture of sorts, so this picture tube does have some life in it. So I'm going to drag out this set, pull out the chassis, try to get the picture tube out, and if I can, I'll put it in that Sentinel set and see if it works any better. I pulled the chassis out of that Montgomery Ward set, and as I'm doing so, I'm thinking, yeah, this looks awfully familiar. It's the right 16 inch picture tube, and I'm looking around the chassis, and like, huh, power transformer, rectifier, RFIF, here's a high voltage cage and a lead and all that, and it dawned on me, this is exactly the same chassis as that Sentinel set has, <laughs> only it's not copper plated. So, let's take a closer look underneath and see if that's really true. Huh, well I'll be. Aside from some minor circuit differences, this is the same set. Most notable difference is there's no filter choke on this set. Um, but I did see in the schematics there was a variation where they actually used a field coil on the speaker as a filter choke. And I can see there's four wires going to the speaker. So, And the Sentinel set it's a permanent magnet speaker, so you only need two wires. Uh, but with a field coil set, two there's actually an electromagnet here instead of a permanent magnet. And you can use you can have that do double duty as a filter choke as well. Another difference is for the vertical integrator. On the Sentinel set, it's all discrete components, and this has an early form of a oh, a, a module here with this inside of this ceramic package is probably several capacitors and resistors. Um, and instead of that glob of four resistors in the other set, they just have a single resistor here. But the rest with these big yellow filter caps and those funky caps with the resistors tied to one end. And the filter a cap up here, transform, and everything else is the same. So I'm guessing either Sentinel was a fairly small company when it came to TV, so I'm guessing Sentinel might have outsourced their chassis to Montgomery Wards, or perhaps both of them outsourced their chassis to yet another provider. So geez, it's too bad I just ordered parts because I could have ordered the same set, two, two of everything and done this set at the same time. Uh, but anyways, and nice crappy old sand resistors here disintegrating. I thought I could pop the, the vertical centering control out of this set and use it in the Sentinel too, but a buddy online at Video Karma, um, or a couple guys actually think they may, uh, may have found one for me, so uh, I'll probably just be ordering a new one anyways. Um, so there shouldn't be any issue with this picture tube working and when I looked at the picture tube there's a, a date on it of, uh, from 1964 so I'm guessing that this was tested or rebuilt or replaced in 1964 so uh, you know this might be this might indeed be a lot better than another than that other tube so I'm gonna pop it out pop it in the other set and resume recording more good news, the tube came out very easily. Here's the date on it, 1364. 
I was wondering um, if this was replaced or rebuilt or whatnot. Well, this is definitely a rebuilt picture too. I've never seen one in the flesh before, but I've certainly read about them online. And what they do when they rebuild it is they break the vacuum seal and they actually use a hot wire and cut the neck off here and then replace all the uh, the uh, cathode and electron gun and all the goodies in here. You can clearly see that there was a line cut around here and it was uh, resealed and there's that bright silver area which I believe was a new getter that they would have applied. A getter is something that helps eliminate any last molecules of air in the picture tube after they re-establish the vacuum. So yeah, I mean there is there is one service uh, called Hawkeye. They're in Iowa I believe and I, if I wanted to fork out the money I could have this picture tube sent there, have it rebuilt and have it sent back. The rebuilding charges are, are reasonable, but having to ship it back and forth really, you know, like effectively doubles the cost of having it rebuilt. Uh, considering I got this set for 40 bucks, sinking a few hundred to uh, have the picture tube rebuilt is uh, kind of hard for me to justify at this point. Uh, so, anyways, I'll pop this tube in and see if it uh, see how it works. All right, here's the Montgomery Ward pitcher tube in this set. Uh, it's, physically, it's a little bit different, so the, uh, the support band is loose. It's a little bit shorter. So the pitcher is um, kind of out of focus and off-center. I could, could could correct that if I adjusted these coils. See, there's thumb screws here and sliders and whatnot. But this is configured for the other tube, which I'm going to be putting back in for, for now. So I really don't want to mess with that stuff. But... Uh, the important thing is the picture is a lot brighter than the other tube so uh, I did go ahead and place a bid on that tube on eBay and keep my fingers crossed. So you can see how it's cut off around it here and it's blurry but it's a lot brighter. And I get a lot more range with the other set if it wasn't at a hundred percent the picture would fade away immediately if I rotated the control. So, yeah, I know it looks horrible, but like I said, <laughs> it's because the coils are out of adjustments. So, now I'm going to put the other tube back in and button the set back up, and uh, if I get the other tube uh, in a week or two, I'll pop this back out and do a proper recap and, and whatnot. That's assuming other projects haven't cropped up in the meantime, and, which tends to happen a lot with me. <laughs> I also know now that uh, exactly what to expect when I restore this set, and uh, it should be a lot easier after doing that one. Okay, I've got the set and them all back together. I hooked up the internal antenna on the top of the cabinet. To send a signal through to it, I'm going to use my Blonder Tongue Agile Modulator set on channel 9. It's got some binary switches here. Um, one through four eight. So I've got eight turned on and one turned on, which equals channel nine. And I've got that hooked up to a Snyder antenna, which has a rotary control, um, which tunes the antenna to the station you select. There's some uh, antenna elements inside, capacitors and whatnot that get switched in and out. So let's go take a look at the set. Okay, here's the set all back together. I used a little bit of lemon furniture polish on the cabinet and I cleaned up the grill cloth with some laundry detergent and a little bleach and uh, it's playing all right. Well, you know, the picture tube is a bit dim but we already knew that and I still need to do a little bit of recapping and fine tuning underneath but uh, otherwise, fun little project. Took me a lot longer than I expected but eh. <laughs> they pretty much always do. So I've got a bit on that uh, pitcher tube and hopefully it'll show up and when it does I'll pop this chassis back out, pop it in and see how it goes. Turn off the lights and this picture should be a lot better. Better but you know <laughs> better considering how weak the tube is. Oh and the sound is working really well. Which is a nice change for my last couple of sets that yeah, still have pretty weak audio. Looks like we're in the clear. Things are sort of messed up in there, but nothing serious. Okay, Hank. Start from the earth now. Make a 180 degree turn. 
So, that's enough for this little project for now, I think. Hope you enjoyed these videos.